So hi everybody, it's Reiko from Finland today in Artist Live and we're playing with pan pastels. So let me just switch the camera around to the table and let's get started. Whoops. Here we go. Just a, whoops, maybe I'll do this. So I'll get a bit, a bit better view. Okie dory. So, mm, this is another stamp book. Today we're doing these like little ATC sized cards. Of course, you can do them in bigger also. But I'm showing a few techniques with pan pastels and talking about the product. And this is the way I really love to use them. So there's black gesso underneath, and all the colors you can see are from pan pastels. Let me just try to get it up close. So like this. There's a blog post about this project if you want to read more. So let me just put that one aside and then let's start. Let me move those also. I don't need that one either. Now, so for you who are not familiar with pan pastels, they are like this, little jars of color and they are almost sorry almost totally made of pigment so there's not much binder in this so when i use them in workshops it's good to have this kind of tray and if you happen to fell, fell this kind of or drop this kind of jar you're going to be covered with the product for days because it's really highly pigmented so what you can do, you can use them in pastel paintings or just like layer them. But what we are doing now first is doing a fun technique using a stamp and Versamark ink. Hi everybody! Thanks for tuning in today. So what I'm doing, I'm inking up the Carabelle Studios stamp with Versamark ink. And then just stamping it to the paper. And the paper I'm using, it's, well, it's almost like white or cream colored cardstock. Just a bit heavier than regular printing paper. So that the finished cards are like made of cardstock. So just stamping the background with where's the mark? Yeah, this is my favorite almost of the Birgit Goobsen series. She's designed I think three collections now for Carabelle Studio. And this is from the first collection. And happy news to those who are from the States, because now you can get the Carabelle Studio stamps also across the pond. The brand is from France, but they are just starting to come to the States. Here we go. Like so. And as you can see, it's versa mark, so there's nothing much yet. But then let's start applying the pan pastels. And pan pastels have these all own tools you can use. The big spongy like things are good for making backgrounds, but if you want to go detail, they have different styles of these tiny tools and they all have these separate little sponges they're called soft tools so they're almost like makeup sponges but softer 
and even if this is like colored already you can just take a cloth and wipe it clean so you can use them really long time like so okay let's start for example this color so now that I'm applying it you can see what starts happening can you see it the pan pastel grabs to the stamped area more than the surroundings and these little jars don't don't contaminate each other so even if I have blue here and I'm going over the pink nothing gets destroyed and you can blend these like if I want to have a purple I just go over with the magenta one to the blue and create a purple like that so we can have the whole rainbow green here maybe a yellow too it's like chalk but pastel it's like those pastel crayons but in a pan like form so what you can create with this what you can do with the crayons is just this kind of blending because if you go with a crayon you usually end up with some kind of lines anyway of course you can take the crayon styled pastel and tip it and then use it but these are like really awesome there's also tints and shades available but of course if you have the colors and white and a black one, you can create your own tints and shades. Make that. What else? Maybe the turquoise one here. Oh, well, there was some red to it. Like so. No, you don't have to heat the Versamark. It's sticky, so the power powder stuck, sticks to it better than the just the paper. Just about the last corner, like so. And because these are almost pure pigment, so it's kind of hard to layer them like get a really intensive color on the first because of course the color just moves around so if you want a really intense color you need to build up layers and secure the layers in between so what you can use of course is fixative but as I'm like in the middle of the living room I'm using hairspray an older hairspray just spraying it and so it's sealed. Oops, also blurry. Okay. Uh, what is wet? Let me just. Uh, the wear mark was wet, yeah, just stamped and then going over with the pan pastel. No, a sponge is not wet. It's just how it is. If you wet it, well, yeah, that wouldn't work. The tray is from Pan Pastel also, and each of the jars is sold individually. But you can put them in this kind of, and I think there's even a bigger one because these are easy to use. Okay, now the screen is gone. So let's layer some more color in some areas. I really want the 
turquoise. Yeah, big surprise there. Turquoise a bit. More vivid. Maybe the green one also there. And then some of that blue there. And let's go over with the Hmm, let's flip it this one around. And if you follow Panpas Patels on Instagram, they have really cool pastel paintings and artists doing some amazing works there. I've dried my hand on those, but well, I'm not an artist, so. Maybe that's cool. Maybe just a touch of magenta there. Here we go. And if you don't like add the fixative seal it, you can also remove the pan pastels. Yeah, these need to be set with something, because otherwise it's just pure powder. Of course, it uh, also makes the look a bit different. If you don't seal it, it's more uh, fuzzy looking or more soft looking. But as you can see from the next technique, if you don't seal them, you can wipe them off. Hi, Lydia. I'm just using a stencil and a rag. I'm going over. And as you can see here, as the knot's sealed with the fixative, you can just wipe it. And Janelle is asking about a fixative. Unfortunately, I can't recommend any fixative because so far I've only had, well, they work otherwise really good, but they smell so bad. There's like these odorless fix fixatives also, but they also cost really much. So I've been drawn to odorless hairspray. Of course, if you're doing un really art artwork, you should use fixative because hairspray ain't ain't the thing if you want to use uh, make art that really lasts time. And if I wouldn't have used the fixative, I could even get the, almost the white paper to show through. Like so. Now there's this little pattern. So let's steal it in. No, these don't. Oh. Well, I can say that these don't react with the fixative because I haven't tried every brand. There might be some fixatives that turn. But the only thing that's like different is the softness in a way. Because if you don't add the fixative it's more well it looks like a powder of course. But if you settle it in then it's not that powder looking. Of course it's not like painted anyway. But it uh, a bit um, gets the, how would you say it, the fussiness of it. Yes, I colored the paper 
Then I sealed the layer with the hairspray so I can get more intensive color because there's so only so much you can layer if you don't use fixative because it's mere almost pure pigment so if you just add more add more add more it's only just like staying on top of the paper in a way so you can get the really really a high uh, like bright vibrant colors but if you add layers then you can get really vibrant colors and of course now we I used a bit more fixative so it won't come off yeah pan pastels you can color paper or add them like use them with stencils or make pastel paintings or add them as like a top layer just a little touch of color so let's do one layer and then get the paper into smaller pieces that's my sponge Let me just clean the sponge a little because i'm going over with the white so to get well that will do then I'm taking the white and adding another layer the last layer I did like was erasing pan pastels and now it's the other way around I'm adding them through the stencil like circular motion when you're getting the pan pastel is also better because if I do this as you saw last time it starts spraying because then again I'm like a parrot it's almost pure pigment so it goes everywhere just most of there okay there let me just get these out of the way and Again, let's seal this. Like so. Mm, pastel sticks. Yeah, pastels are normally... Before I discovered these, I had pastels that are uh, like crayons. So these little sticks of color, which you can use like, like crayons, but they have this lovely soft look. Mm, stencil is from Prima. I think it's called Sparks. So here we go, and then let's cut. Two and a half. also so we'll have a bit different colors of course you can use just a few colors you don't have to go with all the colors of the rainbow but it's fun to have color in your life isn't it
So now we have the bases ready. So what we need a bit stamping, then the vocal point and the golden details. So let's do all the stamping now. And for that I'm using my go-to ink, Black Archival. And for the vocal image, it's from this set. Follow your heart, I'm thinking it's called. Yes, follow your heart. Also by Birgit. And then let's make the vocal points. Vocal, not vocal. Vocal points first. Yeah, if I'm doing series, this is probably the way I'm going to go. Usually I don't make this big amount, but sometimes it's just fun to play with a product and then turn it into something else like little ATCs. For me, it depends on the mood. Sometimes I like to make just one card of the time, or usually, actually, I made make series. But sometimes I do just uh, three cards in a time, and work kind of one card at a time. And sometimes it's just a four. So there's for the parts and now some background stamping. Just a few random words there. Just part there. Here we go. Next one. I've actually made some ADCs with this hard stamp before. I don't know if you can remember the once I did. Hey, Anureka, moi! <laughs> Sorry, uh, if you can remember the ones I did with T. I used the same stamp in those. If you want to see what I'm talking about, please check the Artist Live YouTube channel as. I think the video is there. What is on? Ensimmäinen kerros on ihan panpastelleilla. Eli ihan vaan suoraan panpastellia paperille. Sen jälkeen fiksatiivi ja sitten vähän lisää panpastelia perää. Koko tausta on tehty ihan panpastelleilla. And that was me talking Finnish to Anerika. Oh, Joanne remembers my T eighty six. Yay! Okay, now you're getting bored with me stamping. Just backgrounds, okay? I think we're plenty with those. Maybe adding the zigzag pattern to a few. There. Here we go. Another one. There. And that one, maybe. Like so. Let's continue with the others. Fake layer. There, you can still fit them in. Then, let me wipe my hands a bit. 
I don't get the white heart, so I'll color it. And then let's cut the hearts. Oh, that sounds so brutal. So just a few of the hearts. Really easy to use. Whip. Oh, if I would be a good girl, I would have done a few of these beforehand, so you would, wouldn't need to see me cutting. But luckily, like again, I'm thinking we're finishing early, so maybe it's just good that I'm just cutting these here. Whoops. Here we go. Hearts and let's. Of course, you can use glue to glue it. I mean, the hearts, but the soft matte gel is also a great product for any type of collaging. So, let's use that if I can get the label open. Yes, hmm. Big scissors? No, these are not big. Well, the blade is bigger than in the Tim Holtz ones, but... I really like those because they have that blue pattern. There we go. Let's add that one there. And another one. Maybe there. I'm usually putting all the hearts on the same place, so I'm trying to get this one a bit different. So. Let's finish these with a few splashes. Can you see? I didn't use the pencil this time, but well, I can just do anything with the without the splashes. So of course we need to do those. Let's move that a bit further back. Have you seen these already? I think you have. The Prima watercolors. Of course, I could use any color in the splashes, but let's do a few of the black ones. Just a few. Here we go. And then let's move on to the golden ones. Yeah, these, these are Fisker scissors, of course, my favorite ones. Actually, I do most of the cutting with those. I'm using the Tonic Studio scissors if I need to cut metal. But otherwise, those are my go-to scissors. Try this a bit quickly so the next layer won't get smudged. I'm hoping you are. It's too loud for you. Yeah, let's let's be quick about that because it's like ruining your ears probably. And then let's do the co golden splashes. Depending if I can get the jar open. Yes. Like 
so. So with the collaging I was using the matte gel and now I'm going with the gloss gel. So just a bit of the gloss gel. And some water. So the, the gel turns more like uh, milk. And then let's do the splashes. And as you can see, they are nowhere near golden yet. But wait for it. Here we go. Now with the glitter there. And that would be a good thing to have. A piece of paper. And then let's add the glitter. So now the glitter will stick only to the splashes we did with the gloss gel. So when I'm turning these, we have a golden splashes. Like so. And here we'll those there. Let's get this. So we can do the last step. Okay, let me clean that one. Otherwise, my card will be sticking to the table later on. Yeah, this is a technique I like love to use, especially in like Christmas style. Because then you can go over with, for example, clear or white glitter, and it's really cool looking. Okay, come on, focus. Please focus. Let me just move this up. Maybe it will focus. That. Yep. Right. And then let's do the final touch. Let me show from this one. As you can see, these also have golden edges. Of course, you can use the same technique and just... <laughs> what is posted in? Yeah, let me answer that really quick. But oh, of course, you can use the same technique with the edges. But as that would be dull to do with just one technique. Let's do another one. And uh, Postinen is uh, from from Finnish Post. There's some tips and tricks and some commercials in that one. Uh, Postinen was the paper I just used with the glitter. So I'm just painting the edges with the thinner bar called gold paint. Of course you can do go a bit in also partly. And then the edge. Just a bit there. And there we are. Now it only needs to dry. And when I, yeah, junk mail, <laughs> exactly that one. Postinen is junk mail. Now when I finish, 
the whole sheet, I have nine ATCs ready to go. Of course, you can do also just use different stamp in each of them, so they don't all look so similar. Similar, or use different kind of embellishments or layers on top, but it's fun way to use pan pastels on the background but as you could see from the first sample these are really versatile you can do paintings and stuff just one more side okay like this And we are finished. Yeah, sparkle is coming from, from glitter. First I used the soft gloss gel to do splashes. And of course they are looking white. But then I just add gold glitter on top. Tip the extra off. And then we have glitter splashes. Let me show from the dried one. So let me just turn the... I am done! Yeah. <laughs> I'm finished. Let me turn the camera and if you want to see the like palette I've done, I can get it from the wall. Now you can see my hand. Ha ha, how funny is that? Hello! So, whoops. Let me try to. Yeah, here. Do you want. Uh, where is it? <laughs> I'm trying to. Okay, that way. That one. Do you want to see that one? Um, talking a bit Finnish, just a moment. Uh, ekassa kerroksessa oli vaan siis panpastelleja. Nauhoitus pitäisi, <laughs> joo, näyttää ainakin vielä hyvältä. Nauhoitus pitäisi olla, niin sen pystyy ihan katsomaan, mutta siinä oli vaan, vaan panpastelleja ja sen jälkeen fiksatiivi ja sitten vähän lisää panpastelleja. So do you want to see that one? So what? Ah, I can't. There! <laughs> Oh, this one. Thank you. It was an experiment that kind of worked. <laughs> there was a few surprises on the way, but yeah. I have a blog post of that also, if you want. Sure, show us. Yeah, I made this necklace. It's okay. Let me show you that one also, as we have no time. I didn't make this. That one I got not from my husband, but if I can show it to you now, it's so it's felt in resin, and the crow there is painted with black gesso, and then there's beading. Let me just grab this one. So, here are also the pan pastels used. It's black gesso background, and all the color you see is mostly from pan pastels. There are a few, few flakes of mist also. But that's like the pearly, pearlescent white avoid. Blue sun rings. So, thank you all for joining today and hope you learned something new. And if you have pan pastels, give them a try with different tools and different techniques. And maybe use them in your scrapbooking or mixed media projects. And thank you for tuning in. Next week we have Ida with us. So, let me just stop recording and then say another bye again.